This is taking me like three people to talk to, you know. Like again, that, that that's how I that's how I view authority. Like I like for that manager, he's like I know what the rule says because this situation was so messed up, right? And then like the twenty to thirty days, you used it four days, you had no service, right? We should not charge you a talking fee, even though that's what the rule says, right? Because I mean, someone look, I have three phone lines on your carrier. All right, I will take all my three phone lines to another carrier, right? If you don't give me thirty bucks back, right? The guy's like, okay, fine. You know, so that's kind of how you view authority. Like that, why I respect that manager is he saw the rules and saw the situation, right? And he's like, dude, this guy's been with, been with us three years, right? I'm not gonna lose a customer because of thirty dollars, you know. So, Austin, go ahead. How do you see authority? Um, I think initially before Virginia asked you what that meant, I just wrote, yeah, I fear it. Um, you got to feel like kind of abuse authority, and I think from my experiences, uh, like whatever I've gone through, I've seen like people abuse it before. Um, so for me, I think it's important that a leader leads by example. Uh, so I respect them, but I, I, I you can tell like the work that they put in, you know, um, and like the way they might say something. There's there's more power behind it when people do that, and I think um, also uh, value flexibility a lot too. Mm -hmm. So there's there's some leaders where they might have a vision and they get caught up in that. And they can't see it any other way, or they can't see that there's a, a, something changing, you know, in the, whatever what you're taking care of and stuff. So I really, I think I really value flexibility and be my example. Let me ask you this question. What authority in your life do you respect the most? But don't say God. Okay. <laughs> Outside of God. What authority do you like do you respect the most? That doesn't mean they're perfect, but you just respect who they are. You want like a specific example then? Or is it Yeah, more? a specific person, example, or you can interpret that everyone. Okay. Um, I think well, one person I respect a lot is uh, is Brandon Yu. Mm -hmm. I, think, um, I grew up with him. I've known him since freshman year. We've done stuff together. But at the same time, his life uh, and just knowing him, like I just know that he's very disciplined. And he's always loved God, and and so I like because and we, and we serve in the youth group together too, right? He's in charge of it. So I think I can I respect him. I can respect it even though we're the same age, or even though I'm quote unquote older than him and all this stuff too. Um, and I, I think the things I said, I was thinking about him actually. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah he's yeah, all this stuff. And what about you? Can I answer? The authorities, the authority you respect in your life? Yeah. Oh, 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 oh sorry. No. Um, I think Pastor Stephen. Yeah. Yeah. Because, um, just from my conversations from him or with him, uh, seeing how he leads and, and what he really thinks about uh, in terms of leading the church, uh, <coughs> seeing him just meet up with individuals, you know, mm -hmm. uh, where he, you know, while he's pastor of our whole church, he doesn't forget, you know, that they're individuals, you know. So, I respect well, that a lot. Austin, I want to make sure you get on that. It's 1 o'clock right now. Mm -hmm. All right. I think I'm... We have two questions left, so we're, we're just going to finish this out. Yeah, right? do it, do it. No, definitely. Okay. okay. Then we're going to go. Oh, I thought we were going to use most of your life. Um, I think my dad, because... Okay. He has a really big servant's heart, and I feel like he serves my family really uplifting. Okay. And so I think that's when someone I really, really respect. Okay. Last two questions. How do you relate to beggars and panhandlers when they confront you on the street? Virginia, you first. Um, honestly, like, sometimes I don't really know what to do. Like, if I have things like practically like water or like sometimes to get food for them, but then I don't really know what to do. <laughs> Similar sometimes I'm, I'm not sure what I should do, but every time I do counter one, I hope that they, I hope that they ask me something other than, can I have some money, yeah. or more than just that statement, yeah. mm -hmm. because a lot of times I'm going somewhere, I'm doing something, yeah. so I feel the pull of like my schedule, mm -hmm. so I don't have time to like stop. Life and like 
figure out what's going on and then like address it. So I hope, I mean, that's kind of how I feel. Yeah, yeah I think I try to be considerate to them. And I usually do the loose change if I have any. It's just if they come and ask me directly. I think mm -hmm. if, if I'm like in my car, I tend to ignore them a lot more. Like, okay, like they're just waiting there. But if I'm on the street, they ask me something. Uh, I try to be considerate. That's probably the best thing. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, um, I might say God bless you at the very end. But I think if I have a, a negative view, you know, where, again, I think from experiences, you're like, oh man, like, you, you, I, I won't give you money too much because I don't know if you're using it for drugs or something. Yeah. Just be considerate. I, I'll tell you this. I mean, this is not to exalt myself, right? Because this is just something God's put in my heart. But when I started serving the homeless in, in high school, I actually volunteered rescue mission for summer and stuff like that. And that's, you know, I met Carmen through homeless ministry, so it's been a big part of my life. I, again, every mission I've done is don't give them money. Because money is perpetually the problem, right? But at the same time, right? Then, because then if you just say that, and like, they're not able to do that, right? Because they're asking for money. Something that um, I strongly believe that you have to you have to be prepared for beggars and panhandlers. Mm -hmm. So here's an example. When I was when I was in college, I used to in my car I used to keep like um, these those nature value bars, yeah. right? And I put yeah. tracks with them, right? So I can hand them out. Or I have blankets in my car, so I can hand out blankets. Mm -hmm. um, when we go to China, I'm gonna we that if I do some on past trips, and it's my fault. We're gonna have food ready for them. Mm -hmm. yeah. And past trips, I've given them some leftovers and stuff like that, you know. Mm -hmm. But I feel like we can do more than that, mm -hmm. especially when food when like you know. Dried food is so cheap in China. Um, I want to make sure that we're always ready to, to hand people um, food. <clears throat> and with that, I feel like we can have like a small tract because beggars are not going to turn us into police from the tracks. No, as long as we tape it, to, yeah. we, we tape it to the food. I think it should be okay. But uh, make make sure you follow the rules. I'm going to make sure that's done. Okay. Yeah. There's not a lot of homeless in Shanghai that you can see necessarily. Though. But you come across them sometimes on the subway, they'll beg and. That's true. Shanghai and looks for them. Shanghai is yeah, San Diego. <laughs> yeah, like San Diego, there's like if I go like to Gasland, there's like homeless everywhere, right? Oh, Shanghai yeah. is not like that at all. Really? Yeah. Yeah, it's a. Oh, have you been there? I'm in Shanghai. Oh. Yeah, I've never seen this though. Like percentage wise, it's a lot lower than the U.S. A lot lower, you know. But at the same time, because <laughs> no, no more people there, I'm sure there's more beggars because by the population wise. I think my government. Yeah, yeah, it takes them out of the city. Yeah. Uh, last question. And how do you react? How do you react when invited to a formal or prestigious event? This is the opposite question now. Virginia, go. <laughs> mm, honestly, I feel anxious. Like, I feel like I'm gonna be Because you're not, because you're not used to that setting. Yeah. Okay. I don't know how to conduct myself. Like, what kind of level of politeness? Or like, what do you talk about with these people? Okay. Adam. Um, I said kind of strange, like out of place or uncomfortable. Um, honored. I think I feel honored. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah, really excited and I'll feel honored. <laughs> We're excited and what? Yeah, I'll feel honored. This whole honored. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. Ah, I gotta <laughs> I was just like those rappers who are my former part. I was like, yeah, I'm freaking damn. Let's do it. Let's freaking do this. I was like, shh. Shh. He's at the way. That's what I think. Me personally, I love formal prestigious events. Right? Because in the Marine Officer Corps, not for the but for Officer Corps, we had formal events all the time. You know, they teach you how to carry yourself. Yeah. Um, I guess part of the reason why I like formal and prestigious events is that it's a chance to see people at their best, right? Like, like I know on the other weekend you might be a slob and like, you know, freaking like nasty and stuff like that, but at this event, you try, right? And I get to see you at your best behavior, right? And it, <clears throat> and I guess what, what I, I guess what ways I like that is like, I, I understand that we're all, you know, human beings and we're all like, you know, sinful and like we do depraved things, but sometimes, the image of God really comes through in a person, you know, and so that's how I see how I see formal perceived events. I'm like, this is what you could be. 
I know you'll see that, but I'm trying to tell you how I see it. Okay. <laughs> this, is this, is, this is possible to learning, okay? To appreciate other people's point of view. Okay. <laughs> just try. So like for example, like here's an example. Generals or senators. Or maybe not senators, because politicians have a bad. Yeah. But those are generals, okay? Like, I know, I, I've seen generals in the off time. They're like, just a regular guy, just like, let's wear sweatpants, like, watch TV, da, 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 right? But at prestigious events, you see them. Com commanding. Things. Yeah, you, you see them in a way where they come across as respectful. You see the way that like, people respect them, right? And you, you think, like, I know it's kind of weekend. You just, like, sweatpants, like, watch football on the weekend, right? But at this event, you see people like, hey, general, it's good to see you. You're doing a great job, da, 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 right? I'm like, and you can see how they react to that and how they want to be better because of that. You know, and that's, that's why I really like formal procedures events. And for example, like weddings, like, I also really like it because it's a chance to honor people. Like, very rarely in our life do we honor people. You know, like, hey, let's, let's have an event where we honor Adam. Right? Like, we don't ever do that. You go, he'll go like, all the, I do it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you think about, like, like, like which, and we have events where we honor a bunch of people at the same time. Mm -hmm. but there's no focus yeah. on that person, you know. And so the thing is, when, when God tells us, I'll do one another in honoring, right? Um, and, the, and we think about if God honors us, the God of the universe who creates all things out of nothing, if he honors us, how much more should we honor people? So that's kind of why I see formal for teaching that, you know. I appreciate that. I think it's, a, it's only for a certain tier of society. I don't know if that's agree. That's okay. true. Even if you're super poor, you've had formal events. Yeah. But it's a little different than like. <laughs> Here, I'm here, 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 I mean, when, me and Virginia, when we were in Galio, we uh, we took the orphan girls to like a nice restaurant at one time. Remember that? I guess I just see that as different than a restaurant. It wasn't. It wasn't a KFC. We took them to like this like actual banquet, restaurant. like banquet. Oh, style. Nice. Or we had to go in a private, private room and like this huge oh. table. Like the table was like as big as like the living area right here. This was like 14, 15 oh. minutes. Oh. Oh. It's huge. Yeah, but the girls, the girls felt like really awkward, you know, because they never. Yeah. And I mean, and in some ways, that's what I really appreciate, because they've never been honored like that before, right? We pretty much said like, we won't. In the last day here, we want to honor you, yeah. right? Because we want to show you that God loves you, right? So we actually bought some of the dresses and stuff like that, you know. And again, that's why I love formal procedures events. They went their entire lives without being honored. They went their entire lives without ever feeling valuable, right? Like, like that word valuable. But see, that's what the formal event does, though. The formal event is, is a public expression of something that's felt inside. Yeah. Right? Like, because, like, like, well, he's a general. Why does he need to feel valuable? His title is general. Still. <laughs> okay? Like, they still have formal events. And you still have, like, things like this. We have salutes. Mm -hmm. Right? So it's a formal public decoration of my respect. You know? Like, that's why, like, look, in our culture, you can get married in, pr in private. You can't even go to City Hall and you can just like sign a piece of paper and you're done. Most of you don't have to do that. Watch. Because there's something valuable in public decoration. You know? You think about that for a second tonight. Okay? Formal public declaration of honor. Alright. Alright, guys, thanks for coming for this event. Um, I hope this exercise helped you. And what I want you guys to get from this is I want you guys to see some of your attitudes towards yourself, towards others, and how you relate to others. To be aware of that, right? Because the worst, again, when you go to a different culture, you get frustrated when you do not understand why you feel the way you feel. Right? That's, that's what culture shock is. Culture shock is you're not sure why you feel the way you feel. Right? You don't know how to handle it. All right? So I want, the more I can help you guys wrestle with it, with that, the better it's going to be for you. All right. This, this last trip we had in the summer, one of our team members had really bad culture shock. Like, worse than I've ever seen. Nick. Oh. Right. Yeah, yeah, really, bad. really bad. Like, like, cult, like that, that's almost. No, they didn't cry. But culture oh, shock. Worse than that. It can, it can literally like debilitate you. Like, if you see people culture shock, they basically will just sit there and just like, I, I don't know what to do. You know, because you can't leave, right? It's like, how's the mouth? You know. Yeah. And so right, right now, I'm trying to show you guys the tools of how you fight culture shock, yeah. right? And how you fight it is just, just think through why do I feel the way I feel? Yeah. You know. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I pray that um, as we try to be faithful in this time of preparation, that you will continue to bless us and change our hearts in the ways that we need to be changed. 
Uh, may you mold us into your servants, the people you'd like us to be, and help us as a team to grow, to support one another, um, and to honor you in all these things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, David. Get out of here, everybody. You can stay in one. <laughs> <laughs> can I wear a bro? On a summer yeah, shirt. Actually. We're recording yes. behind you. So you know. <laughs> awesome shirt, Carmen. Carmen, your shirt. Thanks. Honey, I don't get it. Oh. It's a bear. He wants honey. Yeah, there's a bee. Okay. Yeah. It's like honey. Also. I want to come back with your. Uh... Good. Yeah, I'll be right back. <clears throat> How much for the pizza? No problem. Where'd you come from? Doing. Austin and I are trading places. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>